Yes, this meeting is being recorded. I think we're uh, on and we're ready to go. Yeah. Okay. All righty. We're uh, welcome. It's our little uh, Monday show. Uh, for some reason, I'm exhausted today. I don't know why. But I think, you know, we have a problem with, we have a um, uh, 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 a lot of pollen out there today and uh, uh my eyes are burning and you know makes you tired makes you very very tired anyway let me go to our panel because these people deserve to be able to talk uh hello there shecky uh he's connecting Hello, oh, there he is um hello shecky uh hello andrew Hello. Or can we call you Andy? No. I bet you hate that. I don't hate it. I just never get it. You never get it? Nobody ever calls you Andy? Not since I was a little kid. My grandmother called me that, but... Uh, oh, really? Yeah, but she's gone. And there is the lovely and attractive Mandy. How are you, Mandy? And of course, Charlie Wallace is with us today as well. Hello, Charlie. Hi. You've been doing a lot of... Uh, baseball umpiring lately yeah yeah in fact i'm supposed to do four nights this week so wow so we won't see you on the late show huh unless it rains unless it rains well okay uh, we we are so used to you being on every night that now that you're not there it's not the same maybe i just won't do a show if you're not going to do it <laughs> i'm serious wow. i'm serious yeah um, well i miss you guys Hello to Mike Chisholm and to Len LaFrisco. He has joined our little party. Uh, Hello, buddy. And Mandy looks like, because it looks like she's working off of her computer today. Yes, which I got. I it, finally got it working, so I it, it's my it, phone. Yeah, and that nobody else is there to give no. you a bad time. <laughs> she's free, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Or at least reasonably priced. <laughs> 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 How about you, Shecky? What's new? What's happening over there in uh, Queens? Nothing much. Got some, read a disturbing story today about a friend of mine, but other than that... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, well, is it anybody we know? It was a staff member's son who committed suicide. Oh, jeez. And it's a story by his wife who's I can we call it investigated the story? This happened over eh, 20 years ago. Oh. He apparently was diddled by priests. Oh, oh boy. And the church, of course, denied this ever happened. And when she would question it, it was like, oh, we didn't do anything and go with God. Go with God. Go with God. <laughs> So he do they think that he committed suicide as a result of this? That's what his wife believes. Yeah. Okay. All right. He basically he jumped off a cliff into a river. Yeah. Oh no. This was nineteen, I guess ninety four, maybe. Are you sure that wasn't just an accident? He parked his car and jumped off a cliff. Yeah, it was an accident. Yeah, <laughs> accident. He was gonna go look at the scenery and where he lived. <laughs> oh, God. oh, I've never seen this. So th this is not before. somebody you knew, but this was the son. Oh no, he was a friend of mine. Oh, okay, but he, but he, uh, uh, he was the son of somebody. He was the son of one of our beloved staff members. Oh, how old was he at the time, Shecky? Who? When he when he uh, jumped off the cliff, how old was he at that point? Uh, can I say, let's see, I'm 50, born in 55. He was born in, I think, 60. It's actually the story. I think he was born in 62. So, so did, oh, actually, earlier than that, they had four children. So he had gee, born earlier. Almighty. And were they still young children? Yes. How do you, you know, I don't understand that. Me either. You know? I mean, in fact, I never question the staffer about what happened and I always thought it might have been male postpartum depression because he had just had his fourth child like three weeks earlier 
Do men get postpartum depression? Uh, I've never had a child, so I don't know. But I bet I've you never do. had a child easy to eat. Well, let's ask them. If you're not, if you're not, I've had sleeping. three, and I, I never got depressed from them. Okay. Yeah, it's, but if you have four like children under five a years real old, thing that what? Like what, what? What, Mandy? I, I said it's a real thing. I, I remember yeah. I got the baby blues. I didn't get it like extreme like people get, but for like a week after my first daughter was born, I was measurably sad. Like I thought, what have I, I actually told my mother, what have I done? Why have I done this? <laughs> yeah, my wife was depressed. After and, and you still ask yourself that every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Especially you know, as I say, at that just, point, that's I just put college. it off to. He had a fourth child and just all under five or six. Wow. Whoa. And couldn't handle it. So I never, quote, delved. But apparently he was like at a Catholic boarding school. <clears throat> well, if he was abused as a child, I, I can see where he might be depressed by having, you know, a lot of kids. Yeah. Maybe he was afraid he was going to do it to his own children. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, who knows? Who knows? But it was a very, <clears throat> it's in the Daily Beast. It's in the Daily Beast. Yeah, like it's at it. the web page, the article. Oh, wow. And how long ago did he do this? Just recently? No, 94. Wait, the suicide? Yes. In 94? Yes. And they're just writing about it now? And you just found. Well, the wife wrote an article about how she was trying to discover what led to this tragedy. Okay, now wait a minute. Uh, well, I, in 94, I guess you would have known him in 94, right? Oh, we used to go on vacation together. Oh, wow. Back in the 80s. But he committed suicide in 94? Yes. So why, and you just found out about it? Well, she wrote the article. Oh, I found out about the reason. Well, the coming to light of the priest stuff. The reason. Yeah. And Obviously, he you knew he investigated the Catholic Church and what happened to him with, quote, the priests. But you well, didn't, know, you didn't that know about was... the suicide until now? Oh, no, I knew about it the day it happened. But back in the 90s, they weren't talking about no, no, what I'm saying is the Catholic Church the way it is now. When, when Shecky yeah. started off the story, he said, well, today I found out. Oh, no, no, no. I oh. knew oh, okay. the morning yeah. that he disappeared. He found out the Back possible motive. He found out about the a motive. Was ah, well, the oh. wife wrote the article this weekend, or it was published this weekend, explaining what happened in, as far as she's concerned. Yeah. I wonder how many suicides have occurred over the years. because Many. Boy Scouts, <laughs> all those kind of things. Absolutely. Being molested is one of the big precursors to male uh, and female suicide. Really? Absolutely. And there is a thing, uh, women are much more prone to postpartum depression, but many men, yeah. uh, the fear that goes through when they recognize it's here and I have the responsibilities and how delicate and it is. Also, and they were things. very Catholic. And again, I not because I don't know, maybe in the back of his mind is my children are now going to be going to Catholic schools. Yeah, and what happened to me could happen to them. Mm -hmm. Well, wouldn't your tendency be to not want to send them to public to Catholic schools? Well, listen, well, when this staff, when this staffer died, I went to the funeral. You have never seen a Catholic funeral like this. Oh, really? Because again, I don't go to Catholic funerals, but there's some priest like walking around with like I want I want to call it a lantern with like smoke yeah. coming out of it. Yeah. Or, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that whole thing. Anybody yeah. here a Catholic know what we're talking about? The smoke. I'm Episcopalian. So. You're, you're Episcopalian? It's it's for incense. So oh, it's for it's very good. high church kind of activities, you know. Oh, I thought it was just you were having a, a pot party and you just want to <laughs> keep the place. That God no, likes a good state. Know, it was like a high mass or whatever you call that, yeah. you know, when this particular staffer passed away. Mm -hmm. wow. And if the you put in the right was, herb, you get real high at mass. Was the family aware of this molestation <laughs> earlier? I wonder. Because if you read between the lines, I'm going to say yes. Because it would seem to me that if you're the very church you're sending your kids to, molest your child, you're pretty much giving up on that religion. 
<laughs> you know? Well, yep. coming from a logical standpoint, when people are in the, the thick of that situation, yeah. logic is not the first decision making no. <laughs> ability. When you're you know, talking about this, and again, I'm not going to, because I'm not that religious. This is what God wants me to do is have sex with this priest. When you when you I, talk I about organized say, religion, when does logic come into it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's Just true. donate enough money and you know you'll be fine. Yes. Hmm. Can you imagine being someone who wasn't molested by your priest and wondering what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> Well, that you am I it. not good enough? <laughs> now that you mention it, I've got depression. <laughs> you? No. Oh, oh. <laughs> Is anybody here Catholic? I was raised Catholic. I was raised Catholic. But, but yeah. you're still Catholic. Uh, I guess. That's what they say. <laughs> well, no, no, it's very easy to not still be Catholic. All you have to do is just screw up on one of the dogmas of the religion oh, yeah. you know Thanks. and you're out you know i'm afraid i'm afraid the whole church would fall in on me if i walked in there <laughs> <laughs> so that water starts to boil in the <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> isn't it interesting though how like there are certain religions or faiths out there how if you are this you are also you also could be an ethnicity as well like where they kind of blur the lines between a religion and an ethnicity and if you're born that way, well, you are li listed in some eyes always that way, and some eyes not necessarily. Yeah, that's their problem. Well, the thing <laughs> I always like about being a Jew is we're very relaxed about that stuff. You really, you could, you could do almost anything. You're still a Jew, and there's well, no hell, I found, right? I found out years later the cantor at my temple was also doing young boys. Ooh. Really? Wow. Yeah, but you know the difference is number one that because the Catholic religion has such a high... Uh, uh, well, they're not married. Well, well priest, opinion of, of your priest, for it's instance. Standing in the community. That you, you don't even question the... the yeah, exactly. But, you know, I mean, come on, if you're a cantor, you're taking a big risk because nobody trusts a cantor. You know? <laughs> they, they, trust, they trust a moil even less. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, wait, a nice wait, 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 hold on a second. I want to find out. Mandy, do you know what the joke just was when you said oil? I, I didn't quite hear it very well. Okay, say it again, Andrew. I want to see it if Mandy, who is a it was, it was alien. Me. Because it was a moil joke, you thought I said it? Yeah, yeah, it was me. <laughs> I, some some of us are a cut above moil jokes. <laughs> wow, okay. Okay. <laughs> Tell me what you said. I, I just said he was he was um, I, I forget how you started the, the I said nobody stuff. trusts a canter. Oh, and I said everybody trusts a moil even less. Yes. <laughs> now, do you know what a moil is, Mandy? Mandy? No. So See, it's just a moil in the Jewish religion is the guy who when they do the circumcision, which takes is off that extra religious <laughs> Oh, okay. Gotcha. It takes off that ugly piece. If, well, if we I'll put it in rap terms, his <laughs> name is MC well, Chopper. That's true. <laughs> 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 To use a boxing term, he was a he's a cutter. Uh, he's a cut man. Yeah. He's a yeah. cut man. <laughs> he's a cut above. So that's what I uh, what a moil is. Right? You've just been exposed to a new slice of life. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know the numbers. Like it's it's funny. The Catholic Church actually has this stereotype now because of the sheer volume and how big it is and how many cases there are. But at the end of the day, I mean. You know, you think about, you hear the stories of athletic coaches, you hear the stories of teachers, you hear the stories of people of influence, where this is, this is common, where you have somebody who's in a position of influence, and they take advantage of for horrendous, horrendous results. Mm -hmm. um, is it more in the Catholic Church, because of the celibacy thing and all of that stuff? Or is it percentage wise, the same across the board in some of these other places? It's just I would such say a probably story. the same. I would say the same across the board. Anybody in authority mm -hmm. can take advantage. There's a, there's a danger of it. Yeah. You know, Any then place. you tell your parents, and your parents are going, oh, your teacher would never have done that, or your Boy Scout leader would never have done, you know, yeah. you're lying. 
any any organization, <laughs> religious, social, or otherwise, that creates an environment where an adult man would has access to children, male or female, mm-hmm. is, is the possibility for misbehavior is there. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. And if no you're a guy who's volunteering no to do that stuff, you gotta. But it's such a sad thing when it's in its pure form, it's such a beautiful thing. Like I think of, you know, I even like I think of Lord of the Rings, right? And it talks about the, the relationship between uh Samwise and Frodo and that just beautiful friendship, yet at the same time, people are are, are ready to to say, Oh no, it was more than friends. No, just like having a coach, like a male figure in my life, and I had three or four of them, that nothing ever happened except for that beautiful exchange of knowledge that mentorship it's the most beautiful thing in the world mm-hmm. but it's not and, always that way and 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 to hear that people take advantage of that and pervert that to the point yeah. where we now say okay it's unsafe we throw the baby out with the bathwater. maybe that's not the best analogy i could have used at that point but anyway <laughs> um, and, and 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 we say now the entire thing's got to be thrown out that's such a tragedy because the basis of it can be so beautiful mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i agree yeah, I learned so much from my high school baseball coach. Really? Yeah. I mean, what did he teach you? Well, he taught me about the the importance of working together, not just thinking about myself, but thinking about the whole team. Okay. And, you yeah. know, you don't want to bunt all the time. You like to hit a home run and all that. Sometimes the best thing you can do for the team is to lay down that bunt and get that runner in scoring position. Right. Not in the major leagues anymore. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, God. I <laughs> see. I don't get that. That's like a moil joke to me. You know? <laughs> and me too. Fact, because I, I'm so not into sports. Why is that, Shaggy? Well, let's see. What were there? 13 walks in last night's Yankee game? Wow. Wow. Now, you get why? a home run, or you walk, or you strike out. Boy, that's yeah. fun. I can get into a sport where all I got to do is walk. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he walked the bases loaded. Oh, then he walked in two runners. Oh, boy, that's great baseball I'm watching. (laughs) That happened last night in the Boston game. I think the guy walked five guys in a row. Jeez. Really? That much? I'm surprised they didn't take him out. Why are they? Well, explain to me why they're walking so much because that uh, that makes it. Because the batter wants to only hit a home run these days. Mm -hmm. So he's just sitting back rather than trying to bunt a baseball, hit a baseball to third, you know, through the gap between short and third or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. The sacrifice fly. Yeah. Or Or the sacrifice bunt. Yeah. God, I wish I knew about that. Worship hockey knows nothing about baseball. I'm so jazzed that I was able to be part of that conversation for a second. <laughs> <laughs> what does baseball have to do with bunt cakes? Uh, <laughs> I don't understand. Hey, everything's got to do with bunt cakes. They're great. <laughs> so anyway, how's every how's everybody been? What's everybody been doing with? Uh, this uh, newfound freedom that we have for about a minute and a half. Because <laughs> it seems like we're going back into hiding again from this COVID yeah. thing. I started wearing my mask in the store again because yeah. Delta variant's going crazy in Austin now. Really badly. Huh? Yeah. Uh, and uh, how about down where you are, Mandy? Um, it's it's going good. Currently, my daughters are fighting because my younger daughter has not gotten vaccinated, and my older daughter is very upset about it. Who who hasn't gotten vaccinated? My younger daughter has not gotten vaccinated. How old? And she's twenty one. You know, she's I can't tell her what. Why won't she get it? Because she's influenced by her boyfriend. Who ninety nine point nine percent of the people that are coming right, down the area no, excuse me, have wrong. not been vaccinated. You're wrong. It's ninety nine point five percent. Ninety nine point nine. When I heard it this no, morning, I heard five. I think it's ninety nine point nine of the people dying have not been vaccinated. What, so what am I right? You have almost no deaths at all now. If people would get would. One of of my right-wing jackass colleagues told me that the way to get past the Delta variant is with earplugs, so you don't have to listen to liberal bastards like me. 
and, and I said, uh, I would prefer to wear the earplugs when I am in contact with you. I think it would be a great relationship. I mean, the statistic like the one we just mentioned, 99.5% of all people that have been vaccinated have not come down with the, with the, with, uh, the, the virus. Well, haven't been hospitalized or died. Haven't been hospitalized yeah. or died from the virus. Isn't that enough evidence for you to do it? Not no, when, so. not when you believe in magical thinking and you. you and Trump, you're, you're part of a political operation that thinks it can only regain power if the existing fails. I, how do you gain power if all the people who aren't getting the vaccination are people you need to vote for you? Yeah. It's our version of voter suppression. We need to keep talking about how great the vaccine is. The more yeah, we so, talk about it, the more we can suppress the right wing vote. Okay. That doesn't yeah. stop me from worrying about my kid. So, yeah, so it doesn't. It think, doesn't. <laughs> Sorry. No, I'm just. I don't think it's I'm, just. Have you had a talk with her about this and said, "Look, I'm yes, afraid and you." She, very defensive about it and said, I may get it at some point. I just don't want to get it right now. Um, I believe there's several factors. I think it has to do with her boyfriend and his family. They're conservatives. They're not. Oh, don't for Trump. Right. Yeah, but, you know, I think that you could appeal to her on the level of don't let your boyfriend influence what you're doing. Well, I know. I About. And listen, my, my other daughter who lives in Texas, she's already thrown out enough facts to uh, cover the conversation. Yeah. yeah. I just Remind, don't want to fight about it. It's Remind her, she can get it in secret and not tell her boyfriend. Yeah, she can get it. No, actually, now, all the, all the people on Fox it's News did. <laughs> Fox <laughs> News actually has uh, passports. You you can't work at Fox News if you're not vaccinated, but yeah. they're not talking about it. Someone leaked. Well, no, I'm Steve also. Ducey went on the air this morning and said you should get vaccinated. Hmm. Okay. Yes, uh, Mike. I can see how, like, I mean, we get so much American media up here. Mm -hmm. I can see how people would think that politics is a huge part of it based on just watching your left and your right go at it the way they do and all that stuff. Up here where we are, we have the same issue that you guys have, though, where there's a certain number of people that just aren't getting vaccinated. And it's not political because up here we haven't politicized it this even a okay, little bit. But what is the reason? Is it religious? Well, I go back and I mean, one of the things I watched John Oliver's show, I don't know, I want to say it's maybe two months ago. Yeah. And one of the stories on there was talking about how there's a psychological thing that happens when you create enough dust, enough confusion for people, for whatever the reason is, the result is that person will now become inactive and they won't do anything. They'll become paralyzed. And I think because of the 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 it's bad for you it's if you get if you get vaccinated you're more likely to get the delta variant if th there's so many little things that are out there that could cause people to be confused which causes them to stop and be paralyzed i think that is like a part of it well, too so somebody said something earlier about hey we got to talk about the good things that are happening and 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 you know you know uh, uh, go, go, go the okay, other way okay. on the Silly objections to educate people properly. Yeah. If you catch someone in in still decisive mode where they're making a decision, getting them to, to switch sides is easy. Once someone has taken a position, to get them to change means that that they have to admit they were wrong, and that's so. So many of the the clinics now are offering anonymous vaccinations. Your friends don't have to know you were vaccinated. Wow. So come, come do it. There'll be you. You'll have your record, and no one will know. And that's been a motivator for a lot of people to get vaccinated. Yeah. That I know, who still write anti-vax shit on Facebook and otherwise. I know they've been vaccinated. One I'm of them called me to ask me about the side effects that I had because he was having a sore arm. Yeah. And yeah. I, I said, how come you're still writing that shit on Facebook? He goes, I, I don't want to be attacked. Yeah, Mandy. Oh man. Oh, I was just going to say, my daughter is not anti-vaxxer. She just, I think she's heard some things that are scaring her. And it does not help that her older sister is telling her to do it because they're, that's, yeah. their no. relationship has always been like, like kind of okay. that way. If her sister's telling her to do something, yeah. she's going to immediately not do it. Well, you know, any argument that people have that it's dangerous or that there's some side effects from this. I mean, we've had th over 300 million people in this country yeah. at it. 
and nobody seems to getting a be getting an arm growing out of their forehead. Well, she thinks she's heard something about it affects fertility. Really? And I'm like, that's not true, Kenzie. It that's will. She gets COVID. COVID will affect fertility. Well, Absolutely. she apparently is convinced that she had COVID, which I think she did have COVID at the very beginning, last March, when she went on a cruise. She should have her antibodies checked. She went okay. on a cruise? Good chance she's got it. That's a bullet you dodged, right, Shecky? You, you, Shecky was a big guy for cruises. Well, I've been on a cruise since December of 2019. Yeah. But had you gone on one, say, in February? March. Which is when Kenzie. Well, it all shut down in March, early right? March. Yeah, but had you gone in February, you might have caught it. Yeah. I doubt it. She got but off the boat. I'm not going to say I wouldn't have. She what do you got say? off the boat and five days later was saying how her, she felt bad, her throat hurt, and then she started talking about how she couldn't smell or taste. But that okay. was before we knew about good this. Chance, good chance she had it. Yeah. But that doesn't mean she's immune to it. Have they ever figured out what this is? Oh, that's Shecky's, I can tell. Uh, um, I'm, I'm just wondering, I mean, that, that's, uh, yeah. That, uh, I, I'm just, but have they come out with anything about whether you, you get an immunity to it by having it? It's not as long lasting, they don't think, as what the vaccine provides. So people exactly. who had COVID, need to get a single dose as a booster. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. All right. And, and now they don't know how long this shot will last. Well, right. Pfizer wants to sell more, so they're saying you need a booster, yeah. and, the, and the government is saying we don't see evidence of it. Yeah. How many here trust the CDC? More than I trust the pharmaceutical companies. Well, more, more than yeah. I trust the pharmaceutical yeah. companies, but they, they seem to always be changing their opinion every other day about stuff. Well, they learn, yeah, they learn rather, new things. I would much rather they do that than go hardline. And because they were hardline right from the beginning, they're afraid they can't of change. Yeah. Thing. yeah. 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 Get... Like, I don't think flip floppers are, are, are a bad thing if they're doing it from a thought provoked place of, I now know more than I knew before. Yeah. So I'm changing my tune, right? Yeah. Get information. For that these days. And it's, it's too bad. Now, in, uh, in, in Charlie lives in Texas, and in Texas, they've just been completely stupid about this whole thing. Yeah. And, and uh, have they, they, they're being proved wrong, right, in their assertions that you don't have to wear a mask and so on, right? Well, I don't know what, I keep seeing all these other states, we're having a terrible time here in Texas, and we had like 5,000 infections in one day last week. So, uh, but, but they still keep talking about Florida and in, in all oh, these other states. Florida's 20% of the new infections. <laughs> yeah. Go to Santa's. Yeah. Well, well, there was one one day that Texas was, I think there was only like 15,000 infections, but 5,000 were in Texas. A, a couple of, uh, what was it, last week on one day, we had only one death in the entire state of, of New York. That was New York. And then a couple of days later, it was like three deaths. But I see that within a certain, you know, but that's pretty good. Yeah. You know, I mean, for a state that we got back up to what, 150 a day, something like that. At one point, when this whole thing started, we were up to 900 a day. You know, they just announced Canada's opening its border to us again on August 9th if we have a vaccine passport. I got tickets already. I'm going to Vegas in September. <laughs> I want to I go to Canada. So I was like waiting for that to happen so I can go to Canada. I got yep. I got a couple of meetings in Ontario that I've been putting off. So yeah. Well, Jack and I want to go to Real Canada. Canada. Well, Marjorie and I wanted to go to a foreign country for a while. And I guess the only one available to us is Canada. So not a bad idea. Take a train up there, it'd be great. Come on up. Dollar goes further up here. Come on up. Yeah, my, Miami's more of a foreign country than Canada. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Forget it. Hola, mi amigo. So, uh, you know, this is, it's, a, it's a interesting that here we are, post-COVID, vaccinations are available, and we're still talking about this thing. Well, has it, it gone is, away, Alex? It's getting more infectious, and it's getting more infectious because of all those assholes, excluding your daughter, of course, man. Oh, I... uh, <laughs> 
the shoe who, fits. Who, who won't get the shot? I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah. You know? I'm amazed. And and my ex-husband either. He oh, wow. get it. Yeah, but he's yeah, your ex. So you don't care about that. My, my but, but he, 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 is coming to visit, and she's saying she's not going to. She goes, "Well, if you don't get the vaccination, I'm not going to be around you because you could give me the more deadly variant." You know, she's kind of, you know, going crazy with it. But that deadly variant, not like only that. she doesn't tell him. Yeah. So it's, There's not only is it out there, but they say it may mutate to something else. Yeah. I wonder how many families this is separating. I know it's crazy. I'm like, I mean, in your case, your husband won't get it, so your dog who do have it might not want to have him around their children or whatever. You, 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 your grandmother, aren't you already? No. Me? Yeah. No. Oh, not yet. Not that she knows of. <laughs> <laughs> what? There were secret children in the family. <laughs> You well, only say that if you have sons. What, what, what were you saying? You only say not that you know of if you have sons, because they're yeah. the one. Because right. if your daughter has a baby, you know about it. Now, are you a grandfather, Charlie? <laughs> no, none of my kids want kids. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I am. You are your grandfather. Your grandfather? Yeah, I've got two. Four, he'll be 13 uh, and oh. four. Wait a minute. Mike, what's that? That's not your grandchild. That's my granddaughter, yeah. How old are you, Chuck, oh, Mike? Uh, but, okay, so my whole thing is through the miracles of modern family, I'm a grandfather at 45. Uh, <laughs> I became a grandfather at 42. She's three years old. I became a grandfather at 42 because I've got two step boys. I mm -hmm. married a gal who's uh, who's got a few more years than me. I like that. And uh, and she had two step, she has two boys who are my best friends in the world. And uh, the oldest one, who's 30, had a grandchild for you. Well, Mike, me, that's so nice. Me, Andrew, both, we call both of you Gramps. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Calls me Pa. And it's my, it, all she has to do is just say Pa, and my entire psyche just melts into this puddle of beautiful <laughs> emotion. He's my favorite person in the whole world. I've been told, right? I, I've, I've never had any kids, so I wouldn't have any grandkids, but I've been told by people who've had kids that when they finally had grandkids, it was the best kind of kid to have. Oh yeah, all the love with me because here. you can, you can send them home at five them, You can love them. You can give them all the affection you would give them as though they were just your firstborn, and then they go home and you don't have to take. Yes, them. you don't have the mess. <laughs> it's that okay? So it's that, but it's also all the love with none of the fear. Like like I look right. at my stepson and his wife, and I mean you know when Alara was born, you know they're afraid of of breaking her with every single thing. Yeah. Well. Candy and I have had her sleep over at our house at least once a week, basically every week since she was two weeks old with the little exception here or there. And I mean, it's all the love that you have for that child with none of, cause we've been there, done that. Yeah. So none of the fear. Um, and, and it's just, you get to just concentrate your love and spoil that kid. And then like you say, for the hard stuff, you just get to hand and, them back. And, and 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 the and greatest when, feeling in the world. When they go into the terrible twos, you can ignore them if you have to. Right? Yeah. And then when they grow up and they start disappointing you in any number of ways, you can you're you're avoiding that, you know. And the best part is when the grandkids behave in the same horrible way your kids did, and now they have to deal with <laughs> and then they have to suffer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Have any of your kids come back? I, I've heard of parents of kids who come back to them and said, I, I want to apologize. Yes. Oh yeah. I was when I was yeah. growing up. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. already happened. Yeah, and absolutely. Mine, mine, mine have come back and said, we should have been even shittier to you. <laughs> <laughs> my stepson, how many kids my stepson today is Nico. And Nico came to us, I don't know, maybe six months after Lara was born. Mm -hmm. And it started by him saying, he didn't say sorry at first. What he said was, did I do this when I was <laughs> that age? And Candy was like, yeah, you, you did that and more and more and more. And he, after a couple of times to him asking that, maybe she was about a year. And uh, he's like, oh, my God, I'm sorry I put you through that because he's going through it right now. He's in the throes of it right now. Yeah. You know, it's a neat perspective. Mandy, how many how many kids you have, too? I have two daughters, 25 and 21. Uh -huh. I'm asking for one to have a baby at some point. Obviously, I don't want the 21 year old to do it. She's still in college. But the other one that lives in Texas mm -hmm. lives with her boyfriend. They're not engaged or married yet, but 
I'm bugging her and she's like, I got to get this PhD thing done. Da, da, da. But I'll be very excited when they do. That happens. Because the thing my mother always used to give me a bad time about was, you never gave me a grandchild. <laughs> yeah. I said, well, you know, that didn't come with the package. No. You know? <laughs> It's for me to decide whether I want to raise that kid. Exactly. You're not going to. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I hope they have kids. I mean, I hope they do. They they both say they're going to. So. Yeah. Or they, they hope to. Well, I'm I'm sure they, they there's a certain maternal thing that kicks in. You know. Mm -hmm. you, but but on the other hand, I think people are doing it a lot later now. I don't think they feel they have to do it like, you know, when they're suddenly they hit 21, they got to have three kids. You know. I know. And see, I was 29 when I had my oldest. Mm -hmm. And so I'm already the age my mom was when she was born. So now I'm like, okay, since I waited a little later, now I've got to be older. Yeah. 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 You know, you know but that's, that's good. You know, uh, and uh, they turned out okay, right? Yeah. Except yeah, they for they might, fight they like might... little brats about huh? that. That's kids. I wish they'd get over this because. I, they fought when they were teenagers. Oh, so, uh, so you think this is part of the fighting they did? The, the kind of sibling? Uh, it's just a girl. Like, like they just butt heads about stuff because they're just kind of different. So they're she's all, not the one to all tell. All life, but they're very different too. So the, her sister is not the one to tell her to get the vaccination. Right. She doesn't, as, as much as the older one's telling her to do it, you need to do it, you need to do it. Mm -hmm. People are dying. It's you know, all the reasons, which I agree and with. Will, and will she, she won't listen to you either? No, I mean, she's, they're stubborn. You know, they're just, she says she may get it at some point. I'm like, well, you need to get it now. I mean, I'm kind of like you. I'm like, you're one of the assholes. It's yeah. not getting it and causing problems. It's like smoking. I, neither my wife nor I ever smoked, but one of my daughters, decided when she was in high school, she was going to smoke. And no amount of reasoning could have her believe that smoking was bad for her. Right. Yeah, logic so doesn't work. Na nagging just wouldn't help, so we just had to shut up about it. Yeah. And did she smoke? She did for a while. She finally, she quit after smoking for 10 years or something. Oh, wow. And it was really hard. She said the hardest thing she ever did was quitting smoking. Yeah. Well, I quit, I, quit, I quit smoking after uh, 20 years. Yeah. And uh, I, uh, I, a, a couple of years ago, I went to a urologist who told me that uh, he had to give me a cystoscopy because I might have bladder cancer. Too much and, information, and, Alan. No, wait, 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 hold on a second. Hold on a second. This is not a pee joke, okay? Yeah, right. Well, I, he not said, yet. said to me, why, why do I need a, a, a cystoscopy? Why do you need to check my bladder? He said, you might have bladder cancer. I said, do you know that from any testing? He says, no, we want to find out and make sure. And I said, what makes you think I would have it? He said, well, you know, it says here you smoked for 20 years. And that's 20 pack years, 40 pack years, because you smoke two packs a day. Ooh. And I said, so then you're telling me because I quit 25 years ago, I might still have cancer? He said, yes. I said, then why the hell did I quit? <laughs> and he looked at me like I, I was from outer space. You know, I said, if I had known that there was always a chance I could get it, I had no reason to quit. You hmm. know, I, I found that kind of ridiculous that after 25 years of not smoking that all of a sudden I would get, you know, bladder cancer, which never came to pass. But he kept liking to do this procedure because it was an expensive procedure. He did it twice on me. Yeah, he had to go on vacation. I had to go on vacation. <laughs> right? So is, okay, should we segue we... into trickle-down economics now? But it, uh, it, it, it was part of trickle-down. Oh, trickle <laughs> his, boat's, his boat's name is Alex's bladder. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was literally like he set off a starter's pistol and everybody went. That was great. OK, now we can make jokes about it. And but I mean, <laughs> quit because I felt it was going to be healthier for me. And I, then I find out in my, in my 70s that, oh, no, you might have bladder cancer as a result of having, yeah, I quit. You know, why are you doing this to me? Is that just a man thing or is that just both? Gen no, my doctor I hadn't heard that. We thing. both have bladders. Uh, women <laughs> have endoscopies too. Bladders, no, no gender. 
It's just, well, you know what I'm saying. Is it like common in women that they get bladder cancer? Oh, yes. Oh, absolutely. Women that get bladder cancer, too. Right. Me, too. Yeah, yeah. But the chance is higher if you continue smoking. Okay. Yeah. Well, I quit a long, long time ago. So. The only thing is with cystoscopy with women, it's easier because they have less distance to go, shall I say. <laughs> Depends on the guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, in my case, <laughs> they charge me more because they charge by the mile. <laughs> well, you know why men are better at reading maps than women. We can visualize an injury feeling a mile. <laughs> yeah. We're always told that this was six inches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. You listen to that. Welcome to Anatomy and Biology with Alex Bennett. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that a pisser? Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> so anyway, uh, so Shecky got. Uh, so you did you read the article in uh, of your of your? Uh, oh yeah. yeah, I'll send it to you later. I'll send it to you. Send it to you. Yeah, it would be fascinating to see what she wrote. It's very lengthy what? and very detailed. Why did you wait this long to write something? Like that? Because she's been. Well, she didn't want to investigate this when her husband died. That she didn't want them to investigate. No, she didn't want to investigate physical. It was just he committed suicide. Let's move on. How did you, does she have in the article? Does she have proof positive that he was molested? Yes. Yes. So is this and one of those? They destroyed all the records. Oh. Okay. So again, if you say you should have proof positive, the Catholic Church destroyed millions of records oh, of geez. priests. But there's even like a timeline of this priest. 1994, Father Bennett was moved to this church. 1995. Becky, didn't they have an island somewhere where they sent all the priests? <laughs> oh, and then one of them <laughs> is island, yeah. in Vermont on an island. You I know, know and the, island. Now they, there's a reality. Well, right they would there. always send them to another area. Yeah. Right, they would, they would, this fellow was being moved from A to B to C to D to E to F, you know, that kind of thing. You know, there was a time when I was growing up, uh, the Catholic Church was unimpeachable. You didn't say yeah. anything against the church. Yeah, it's well, like Bill Cosby, man. Like, we're in yeah. a time right now in the 90s, nobody said anything about Bill Cosby. Now we're at the place where everybody's coming forward. Catholic Church was the same thing in the '90s. People didn't say anything about that. Well, no, now, but back when I was growing, no, going, no, in the '40s, nobody said anything about it. Listen, because I'm, you know the Italian yeah. mama would slap the kid if he said something. Of course, yep. don't talk about Father So and So that way. But he did. He touched me. No, don't. You can't I'm, talk about Father. Yeah, you know, go watch Going My Way. What do you think Bing Crosby probably was doing with those kids while <laughs> okay. he was swinging, swinging on a star? <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, not only that, my dad, who went to Catholic school and was scarred because of it, he's got nun stories up the yin yang, man. That guy has got like a well, few what, stories, and not, what, not sexual stories, but what I used to story. hear about when I was oh, abuse, school, yeah. when I was going to school, we had Marin Catholic High School, and I used to hear from kids about you know that they were they went to parochial school and then they went to Marin Catholic, and all along the way, the nuns were known to be absolutely vicious. I yeah. slap your hands with the ruler. You know, they beat the crap out of the kids. And quite frankly, if I had any teacher that even laid a hand on my kid, they, I, they couldn't do it. I just wouldn't let them. But they yeah, got but no, Mary, Mary, whatever her last name might be, was like, oh, it's Father Whomever. He's coming here for Thanksgiving dinner. How could you say that about Father Whomever? You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. He's such a nice man. Yeah. You know. He's, 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 a, he's a father. I mean, priests literally had a, had a real past when I was growing up. I mean, it was everything. I mean, there was, a, you know, I grew up in uh, North Beach in San Francisco, where every kid in those days was Catholic. They were Italian, whatever they were. Yeah, oh, they yeah. Were in the neighborhood when I grew up, they're now Chinese. But it, it, uh, uh, it was Italian. And... Um, uh, it was amazing. It was just amazing. The just the, the how they coasted along, how they could get away with anything. Well, they had these kids who were altar boys, and then Mama is so excited 
that little Anthony is an altar boy, yeah. you know, <laughs> St. Quiddens. You Why know. did you change, take the name Anthony? Because we know somebody named Anthony. No, because <laughs> I'm reading the Tony Lazeri story, the Yankee shortstop. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. And he was, and he grew up by Coit Tower in North Beach. Yeah. 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 Can I can I pivot this conversation a little bit? And I'm very excited how to do it. I wish Bender was here because I I told him I was going to talk about this, but this is perfect. Last night I got my wife to do something that she's never done before. Did you give your head? Okay. <laughs> okay no she watched godfather 2 with me she's never seen godfather 2 and Ew. she watched and i haven't seen it either oh my god oh okay. god the greatest movies ever made you know yeah. okay. you actually I'll put it on my list did you see godfather 1 i've seen parts of it parts of it. oh then go see and it godfather again 2 it. is it's almost a standalone picture it is they had a budget for godfather 2 godfather 1 didn't have a budget yes yeah. Yeah. So it starts, um, and by the way, my wife, not only like, she didn't just, it wasn't one of those things where she was like humoring me saying, okay, I'll watch this with you. Like she does like Marvel movies and things like that. No, no, no. From the very beginning, she was riveted. Like halfway through the movie, she's like, Fredo, oh, Fredo's in trouble. And I'm like, oh, she's in. Like she's in the story. <laughs> okay, I'm going to watch it now. Right? And yeah. she's like, oh. And, uh, but the movie starts with Anthony uh having his first communion and i mean you want to see the pageantry of catholicism watch a coppola movie like watch one of those movies and that you see the very that was very typical things. that was very typical yeah. of catholics back in that time yeah it's ceremonial and i mean yeah. it, it, it really when you look at in modern society there are very few things in north america that are like that ceremonial uh, still to this day, like there's, man, there's a I lot of. Say, I passed by that house any number of times when I've been in Lake Tahoe. Ah, cool. Down by the South Shore. You know, and also, <laughs> Mama would be so excited that yeah, I'm using Anthony again as the name. <laughs> He's in the procession. Look at him in there. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, and and if you think it was back then that it was. It had a grasp on the country. I mean, prior in the in the in the forties, in the thirties, I mean, you have things like the Legion of Decency it told you what movies you could go to, and yeah. a movie company would not release a movie if they didn't think it was going to get approval by the Legion of Decency. That yes, but also the grip. studios in the thirties wouldn't make anti-Nazi or any movies that would bring that up because then they couldn't release them in Germany. By the way, I was watching, uh, I, I, I saw a couple of movies that had the Nicholas Brothers in them in the last 24 hours. And I watched the Nicholas Brothers, who were the most phenomenal dance team almost ever in the movies. And that includes Astaire and Rogers, okay? I mean, they were incredible. Uh, even Fred Astaire said he thought they were the best uh, dance team in the movies. Um, they appeared in a lot of movies for 20th Century Fox, but they never appeared in the same scene with any white performers. Because they would cut them out. Because they would it, cut them the out. the Mason Dixon line. When they played them in the South, they would cut their performance out of the picture. Mm, wow. That, that's wow. how things were back then. You know, and the same thing was true of the Legion of Decency. If you made a movie and you thought that it would come into conflict with the Legion of Decency, what? It just wouldn't uh, they wouldn't make it right or they would change the script to didn't they always send the scripts to the legion of decency oh first? well not the legion of decency the breed office well, what the was the office. first american one that got that had an x-rated and it was very popular i think the, it was midnight cowboy right? i was just gonna say midnight yeah, cowboy. yeah i think so yeah 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 but that's 69 ish 68 yeah. 69 i mean yeah. Yeah, but you wouldn't do that before. I mean, there were. But no, all the studios I'll would not make any you. film that disparaged, let's say, Mussolini, Hitler, or something, because they couldn't then release them in those countries. With, and they were a big market in the 30s for film American films. A film that didn't pass the censor uh, was an uh, Otto Preminger film. The Moon is Blue. The Moon is Blue. Right. 53. Right. And uh, the. 
picture was a major success and people wanted to go see what was so dirty about this movie and what Nothing. was what was it that was dirty about that movie Rick? do you remember was it magni mcnamara wasn't married and having sex i can't even remember no they used the word virgin oh that's right yeah. uh, <laughs> the film. Yeah. okay so i'm gonna ask this from my brothers and sisters who might remember this or not i, I remember that title because wasn't a mash episode centered around that title where they were trying to get that film script, uh, you know, at the 4077? I don't probably, because that's, that's 53, so yeah. probably. That I, think that's how, I think that's my frame of reference for knowing the title of that movie was from a MASH episode. Yeah, The Moon is Blue um, it was a big sensational thing. Uh, and Otto well, Not a very good movie, by the way. No, it wasn't. Otto Preminger, though, wouldn't change it. He refused to. Two mm -hmm. Live Crew were not a very good rap group. You know, very often the things that push the boundaries that allow change to happen based on these things, it's not the best representation of the art. It's a start. Oh, it's a terrible representation. But I can't remember what they got censored for. They, they, was it the title of the song? Two Live Crew? Yeah. Everything. Oh, there, there was a laundry list of things that got them sent to the Supreme Court for <laughs> decency and all that stuff and freedom of speech, but not great rappers, right? Uh, not a great great expression just like moon is blue like you know many times the thing that pushes the envelope isn't the best expression of that art it was no it wasn't a terrific movie at all but he refused to change it and so therefore there was that you know um of course mandy doesn't know any of these movies we're talking about <laughs> because she only goes to see innocent family pictures i'm sorry what what <laughs> face face jam 2 <laughs> we, took, we, took the granddaughter. we took the granddaughter on saturday to see space jam 2 really i saw yep. the beginning of it uh because it's on hbo max and uh it's not very good it's mostly like an advertorial you know what we watched that is really kind of i i i'm, I'm glad i watched it the hitman's uh, bodyguard's wife White bodyguard with um, it's a new uh, one or the first one? The new one, the new, the new one. one, yeah, it's cute new, and it's very funny. It's basically it's a comedy and it's yeah. got uh, what's his name? Uh, got Samuel L. Jackson, uh, they Ryan, Reynolds. This Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds, they yeah. wanted to see Ryan Reynolds and uh, what's her name? Uh, Salma. uh, Salma Hayek. And what they tried to do in this movie to see if they can set the record for the number of times that Samuel L. Jackson said, motherfucker. Or any of the <laughs> other. <laughs> no, Selma Hyatt was just- was you, Forget about her. She didn't have any record to set. He had a, he had a bar to achieve. <laughs> was the whole fiction his it. other high? Every, oh. I could say that in any scene that uh, Samuel L. Jackson was in in this film, they used the term motherfucker at least four times. Oh, I, would I love say that. That's more. my favorite curse word. I love that huh? curse word. Yeah, my favorite curse. Yeah, but uh, it was it was it was a fun picture, you know. It was cute. He hates when I say cute. I hate mm -hmm. to describe a movie as cute when it's. <laughs> I don't know yeah, why people get offended is... by it. If you're a dad, you're a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> uh, the Godfather Part Two came out in 1974. So I was eight. <laughs> uh, I hate you. I, even though I did get taken to Live and Let Die, Billy Jack. Um, what were some of the other movies my dad took me to? Walking was, Tall. I mean, like Billy Jack. You know, there's literally a rape scene in it. And we're like, but yeah. I, I just never saw it. I never. I, I don't know why I've never. I've heard it's you know that I should watch it. And so maybe the first. Like, I was I was born in seventy six. I was negative two when it came out, but it's still one of my favorite movies of all time. Whatever you do, absolutely oh, so good. make sure you don't miss Godfather Three. Yeah, you can miss Godfather Three. Daddy, okay. I'm shocked. <laughs> but Godfather Three, I watched it not too long ago. No, it is Godfather. bad. Don't say it. it's better than it's you thought. Okay, huh? I, but I like Cannonball Run. This. I should have just stopped. The re is not as bad as the original. Okay, there. I don't know which one I watched. I watched one that came out on the Blu-ray set, so that might have been the re-edit. It 
it has so many. It has just. I would say. I would submit to the panel here that Godfather <laughs> Three has just as many iconic culture moments that no. have been taken out of it. Like um, every time I think I'm out, they drag me back in. That's from Godfather Three. There's a whole bunch of them. Mm-hmm. When you yeah. watch it, you're like, holy shit! They really did pull a lot of. And, and, and but they and, say it because they're making fun of it, they, and because yeah. they thought it was <laughs> good. <laughs> that line is such a Whatever. badly written line. Yeah, that's why people do it, and it's it was joke. and, and in true in true Pacino fashion, a badly acted bad line. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff in that movie that is in interlaced into the culture now, though. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Because of the joke, it, it, it is a movie <laughs> that if you're going to watch Godfather One and Godfather Two, eh, you better avoid that one. Yeah, hey, you can avoid it, Mandy. You know. Uh, but you know what they do have, if you ever get a chance to see it, is the Godfather saga, in which they took both they films, do it in order, added act, extra footage, and did it in order, yep. chronological order. Yeah, and it because as you know, the second film goes back to the early days of Don Corleone, and it cuts back. It's a prequel to- and a sequel at the same time. A movie that is very difficult to do that. And yeah. it is a perfect movie, and it's a prequel and a sequel. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's so amazing. Good. It's and it's also it. Am I right, Shecky? Does it hold the record that it's the first picture in history ever to win for best picture and for its sequel as best picture? I believe that's the. Case. I believe so. Yeah, yeah. It might be the only one still. Yeah, yeah, the only picture and its sequel that both won Oscars for uh, best picture. And uh, it and it was, I think, in many ways, for years, it la- it stood as a better picture to me than the first Godfather. Well, the first Godfather was a very cheap movie, like Doctor No, the first James Bond. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty much a B movie. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. that's a great analogy. Y- yeah, 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 a good B. Movie. But you don't get the other James Bond movies without that first one, though. Oh, like, I'm not yeah. complaining. I have to like so, Doctor No, but it's so not Godfather like. Two, but Godfather Two is not that good without them setting the stage in the first one. Like Godfather Two is a standalone. Yeah, it it can stand alone. It you could never see itself. any of the others, and it would still yeah, stand alone. You can watch it all by itself. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, oh uh, yeah. It's some. You didn't need to see Godfather One theoretically to watch Godfather Two. Right. No, it only adds it adds elements, of course. Like my wife, the whole catalyst to this thing was on AMC. We watched the last hour of Godfather One, and she actually kind of had perked up a little bit. And I'm noticing because I'm excited about this, and I'm like, "Oh, maybe we can watch Godfather Two. So in Godfather Two, the reason that she was so emotionally attached to poor Fredo is because she saw poor Fredo also in Godfather One, and was like, "Oh, Fredo, poor like loser." No spoilers. I'm gonna watch it. No, no, no. Poor, poor Fredo. No more. No but spoilers. Mandy, start with one and watch it through. Well, she's okay. Seen I will. Okay, we'll then watch two. all of one and then watch two. I think you'll enjoy them. I, I and can't... also don't forget, Fredo is John Cazell, great actor. Great actor. <laughs> died very young, of course. He went with Meryl Streep. He yeah. died while he was with her. Yes, they were. They were together. They were a couple. Anyway, oh, yeah. you know, I found out one of the uh, the uh, Nicholas brothers was married too. I didn't know this. Dorothy Dandridge. Dorothy Dandridge. Yeah. And the other one was a seamstress. Yes. They did. They said seamstress. Yeah. Yeah. And just to throw this out there, I watched one whole season of the show Fargo. Yeah. Great all- show. Oh my God. Yeah, every season. Uh, every with, uh, season. Kirsten Dunst. The- yeah. Every yeah. every ep- uh, season. Season. That's Jesse Clemens' season. I think good. that's season Different two. Different people. Yeah. It's good. It's really good. I, I was like one of those things I had not even heard of it. Oh, it's great. Watch the but other each, each season is a different story. Yeah. Like there's still a connection between the stories. Yeah. Right. You don't need to have seen the other a different other yeah. season. And oh, really? Oh, totally? So I need to go back and watch season one then. And even the final yeah. season was what's yeah. his name? Uh, black actor. Uh, yeah. Uh, Chris Rock. Chris the one Rock. from the Kansas Rock. City mob. Chris Rock. Chris Rock. You can't Chris figure Rock. out why this Oh, he was great in that. It, but you try to figure out what this has to possibly do 
Yo. <laughs> with with uh, with the steer. Fargo, Minnesota. And yeah. you find out at the and end. You find out. <laughs> you find out. Back in. Okay, I'm so all excited. tied back in. It's amazing. Amazing. Good series. Very good. Really it's good. It's a great series. Well, listen, we've had another wonderful. We we're missing a couple of people today, but we're uh, we're. Uh, it's been a wonderful uh, wonderful hour. I always enjoy this. I was dog tired coming into it, and I and grouchy. <laughs> you have to talk about our per, our personal life. I have a reason to be grouchy. I'm married to you. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, uh -oh. oh, oh, that's a good way to end the show. Yeah, that's. <laughs> that Alex, one. she's about to cook dinner. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I better. I better be. I have some special seasoning on your fish. Love you. <laughs> love you. Love you. Love you. It's anyway, about to get interesting in the Schwartzman household tonight. A, right. big, a big goodbye to the uh, to uh, Shecky, and a big goodbye to Andrew Deutsch. Always love seeing you here, Mandy. Thank you. Thank you, Wallace, thank you, Mike. <laughs> Lizard, thank you, Lou uh, Frisco. Thank you. Uh, also, Marjorie Miller. Thank you. And I must also thank, while I'm at it, uh, Steve Bender, who wasn't here today. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. You know, he's usually here every week, but uh, we, he is missed if anybody. Shit talks. happens. He's on a bender. <laughs> uh, uh, His wife. Anyway, oh. thank you so much. I appreciate it. Everybody give a big wave goodbye, and we'll give a big wave goodbye too. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 See you, Alan.